We're four friends with hot takes on food media. And we're here to review and recap all kinds of food shows in bite-sized seasons. Plus, virtual potlucks, cooking adventures, and food memes. Welcome to Pot Appetit Gourmet Takes. Hi, I'm Amanda. Hey, it's Justine. And it's me, Meg. Welcome to Pot Appetit Gourmet Takes. This season, we have been covering Nadia Bakes, where Nadia Hussein returns to baking her happy place and spotlights creative kindred spirits. This week, we are having a virtual potluck of Nadia's dishes, but first, we have some food and kitchen adventures to share. Meg, I believe you had a (laughs) uh, special kitchen adventure for us. Yeah, I feel like this whole episode is going to be a... PSA from me to you about kitchen safety. (laughs) (laughs) Good good times. (laughs) Yeah. So I dropped a kitchen knife on my foot and it required seven stitches and it was not fun. So do not recommend when you clock that a knife is balanced kind of on the edge of the countertop, maybe just, you know, do something about it, like getting it off the edge of the countertop instead of just letting it stay there that would be my advice to everyone that's good advice (laughs) it was a very sharp knife which is good you do want sharp knives because it's actually quite dangerous to have dull knives but because it was so sharp and serrated it kind of it was going Uh, for my pinky toe it's uh, trying to get it but not today you still have all of your digits (laughs) i still have all my digits all 10 toes yep so that's me don't drop (gasps) knives Amanda, it sounds like you had some actual fun cooking adventures. I left Ohio for the first time in like three years. It was really exciting. We had a little mini vacation last weekend. We went to St. Louis. There were a few things I wanted to to share, uh, places that I went. First of all, on our way home, I had the best lemon meringue pie I've ever had in my entire life. Ooh. Mm. It was, I was quite shocked. A friend of the family had said like, oh, when you're heading out that way, keep an eye out for mile high pie. We saw something when we were on our way out, but like we were kind of time sensitive. The thing that we were going to was only open for so long and we needed to get there before it closed. So we're like, oh, on the way back, we'll take our time. I Googled it on the way back and we ended up stopping at this little cafe. It's called the Blue Springs Cafe. It's in Illinois. It's right off of 70. You get off on the exit and it's literally like the only thing there. To get to it, you ride, you drive on a partially um, like gravel road. It's just, it was so bizarre, but it was the most adorable little place and they had the best pies and it was just like a, a cute little diner. And I, and that's one of the things like my husband and I love whenever we travel is we like to do local places, not chains. Like, so yeah, it was the meringue. Oh my God, guys, because as you know, I've had issues with meringue. (laughs) The meringue on this thing was just astounding. It was like so high and tasted amazing. It was light and fluffy, but like also firm in a way, you know, like it, oh my God, I'm going to send you a picture. A meringue so high, it touched the heavens itself. Oh, yeah, it was a mile high, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was so good. I got lemon meringue, my husband got chocolate, and my mother-in-law got coconut. And we all tasted each other's, and we were all just like, this is so good. I mean, they also had other good food. Like, my husband got country fried steak that he really liked. I wanted like a diner burger so I did that and it was like the hand-shaped patties you know it was just it was so great Ooh, that looks like a nice fluffy meringue it was so good and then you could build a house on that meringue (laughs) (laughs) I also went to a place called the soda fountain in St. Louis which was like a very like 50s 60s diner like most of the songs that were playing I was like hmm I've heard this in the Grease soundtrack and I got what Justine said looked like it was from Culver's. But, um, you know, I got like a little thing of like fries. And then I got a grilled cheese sandwich. And it ended up being like a triple decker. So I did not eat it all. I gave half of it to my husband. But it was a really, really good grilled cheese sandwich. And then I got an alcoholic shake. 
and thought it was liquor and forgot that porter is not liquor, that it is beer. And I was really confused when I first got it about why it was so bitter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then I remembered Porter is beer. But it was very good. So those two places, if you're heading out in the Midwest, um, I would highly recommend. Very, very delicious. You can find them both online. And uh, yeah, it it was just uh, fun to not be home for a while. Definitely. Yeah, sign me up for hard milkshakes. That sounds really good. <laughs> oh, there were so many. I wanted to drink more, but I was like... I shouldn't spend all of my money on uh, alcoholic milkshakes. I'd already had a Moscow <laughs> mule at a bar earlier anyway. So what about you, Justine? Anything fun going on? Yeah, I bought three more cookbooks. Hey. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm obsessed. I actually saw this on Instagram. There is a shop. Uh, they're called Now Serving and on Instagram at mm-hmm. now serving LA. I love that Instagram. I've never been there, but I drool over their books all the time. Yeah, it's a cookbook and culinary shop. They're doing only local pickup only right now, but I did also get these delivered. I brought show and tell. This book that I got that I've been reading, I'm really loving. It's called Help Yourself, a guide to gut health for people who love delicious food. All about, you know, why we get sick and leaky gut and that leads to other diseases like like what I have. <laughs> <laughs> and I also got Clara Cakes, delicious and simple vegan desserts for everyone. Ooh. And this is a book I had been looking at for a while and when I saw it was there, I was like, that's a sign. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, I got The Homemade Vegan Pantry, The Art of Making Your Own Staples. And I was interested in this because, you know, I want to eat less processed foods as much as I possibly can. And, you know, as cooking is my hobby, you know, just making some like little things here and there. Like there's some cute recipes for like flavored ketchups or, you know, mayonnaise or um, chutneys, you know, like just little things that, you know, I can put on whatever. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting. And I did get some jars. for that so (laughs) i saw those canning jars on your instagram and i thought hmm what is justine up to (laughs) (laughs) delicious things meg delicious things (laughs) yeah and shout out to our listener margaret who was the person who first told me about now serving so that's how i found out about that book bookstore Mm, yep that's what i've been up to amanda do you want to tell everybody what a potluck episode is like yes so On our menu today, we have a potluck. So at the end of each season, each of us makes a different dish uh, that was featured in the uh, one of the episodes. In the past, we've split it up with salt, fat, acid, heat. We all chose a different staple to go with. We reclaimed brownies for (laughs) for the USA uh, with the Great British Bake Off. So... Yeah, this time we all decided to make one of the dishes from Nadia Bakes. Um, I don't think we fully know what each other made, but may have some ideas. (laughs) But Meg is going to go first. What did you decide to make, Meg? I think we all have educated guesses, and I think y'all won't be that surprised to know that I chose to make the strawberry clotted cream shortcake cupcake. I was hoping you did. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, so I had been salivating over these since since the first episode. These were featured in episode one, Classics with a Twist. I'm going to go ahead and share my photos with you. <laughs> oh my oh god, my. I thought that was a picture from the show. No, they look uh, even better. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, Meg. Mm, delicious praise. <laughs> All right, so these are the cupcakes. I was very, very pleased with the visuals. It was the cuteness of the cupcakes that drew me to them in the first place. So much pink, so much strawberry. So I was like very, very happy with that. There are a few things that were little stumbling blocks or things that I didn't quite expect. So I think I'll maybe go through the recipe sort of in order of how you're supposed to prepare it. But just a quick overview of what the recipe is. It's a cupcake with a vanilla sandwich cookie in the bottom of the cupcake base. So I used vanilla Oreos. In this case, I used the thin Oreos instead of the regular. You put a fresh strawberry on top of the sandwich cookie. 
you fill it with the vanilla cupcake batter, which is what includes the clotted cream. And then you melt strawberry ice cream into the buttercream frosting. So instead of another type of dairy, you have a little bit of strawberry ice cream to give it some of that strawberry flavor as well. You pipe that on top and then you dip it in some freeze dried strawberries for a finishing touch. So that's what it all is. <laughs> I started making the frosting because you have to chill it for a while first before you pipe it. And you start with just the butter and powdered sugar. And when I was making it, it was really, really crumbly. It was almost the consistency of just the powdered sugar itself. And I thought, this can't be right. And the recipe says it should be light and fluffy. That's not usually what they mean when they say light and fluffy when referring to frosting in a recipe. So right off the bat, I was quite worried. I thought I'd screwed up. But as soon as I added the ice cream, it became the right frosting consistency. But I feel like it wasn't shown that way in the show. I don't remember her frosting ever being like this powdery pile of butter and powdered sugar. <laughs> but it turned out all right in the end. The ice cream I used was not a cute pink color because it was, you know, all natural or what have you. So I added a little bit of red food dye so that it would be that cute pink color that's not called for in the recipe. I made my own self-rising flour. This is really common in British recipes, but it's a little bit harder to find over here in the U.S. That was actually very easy to do. If you go to King Arthur Flour, they have a recipe for making your own self-rising flour. So it's just all-purpose flour plus baking powder plus salt. And also, King Arthur Flour has a lot of great recipes in general, really good bread recipes. I would just encourage people to check out that website in general. <laughs> and when I was making the recipe, it said when adding the batter, make sure that each delicious strawberry is fully encased, is what the recipe said. But I don't know if you guys remember, but in the show, yeah, Justine's nodding. In the show, Nadia was like, look at the strawberries peeking out the top. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I didn't know what to do. I was like, well, are they supposed to peek out the top or am I supposed to fully encase them? But I used all the batter and I distributed it equally. And having used all the batter, it did not cover up the strawberry. So I was like, OK, this looks like what Nadia made in the show. So I'm assuming it's OK. <laughs> and uh, here comes my second part of my kitchen safety instructional video <laughs> or audio. <laughs> when I was taking the cupcakes out of the oven, I didn't fully open the oven door. So I hit the back of my arm on the glass of the oven and it burned. Oh. And I went, ow. And in reacting to that, I moved my arm and I hit the upper part of my arm ah. on the top of the oven. <laughs> oh, man. So I burned myself twice making these cupcakes. <laughs> Oh, uh... It wasn't nearly as bad as the knife incident, but I can still see the burn on my arm. You guys probably can't see it in the video. It's not that dramatic, but yeah, so don't burn yourself. That's PSA oh. number two. <laughs> can we wrap you in bubble wrap? I'm very concerned. <laughs> That's the end of my kitchen injuries for this episode, okay. I promise. <laughs> so a couple of things that I wasn't so happy with. When I took the cupcake out of the oven or out of the baking dish it was in, it was immediately clear to me that the bottom of the cupcakes were very oily, very greasy. And I was like, oh, I bet the filling of the Oreo melted out. So it wasn't that surprising that that happened once I thought about it, because Oreo filling is just oil. So of course, it's going to melt when it gets to baking temperatures. But I just found it a little surprising because, you know, Nadia's cupcakes looked pristine. And then when I cut into the cupcakes to get that very nice cross section, this is another thing that I should have anticipated because it's kind of obvious in hindsight, but the food styling for Nadia's show is so beautiful that I think they make it look a lot better. But the strawberries mm -hmm. on the inside were baked, you know? So if you've ever baked fruit, you know that it loses a little bit of that fresh, bright color. It gets that sort of darker baked color and it kind of uh, shrinks down a bit, you know, loses some of its juice. So when I cut in, I was honestly a little disappointed because it was like a baked strawberry on the inside. I mean, obviously, <laughs> but that's not really what it looks like in the food styling. So I feel like the food styling for the show and for the recipe itself is maybe not quite as advertised, but... I agree with you yeah. because, you know, something's... I don't want to be like something similar happened to me 
but we'll get in that later. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe our conclusion at the end of this episode will be that Nadia lies. <laughs> 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 and also, if you look at the cross section of her recipe, you can see a nice layer of the Oreo filling. It's and very... I thought, well, maybe it's because she used a regular sized Oreo and I used thin. Even using the thin Oreos, there was still a tiny, tiny bit of the cream left that hadn't melted away. But even if I'd used regular, I think it would not have looked how it did in the photo. But it all tasted really, really good. And they were really cute, which was obviously goal number one for me was to make them look cute. The cupcake itself was very tender. It was really nice to have the juicy strawberry in the middle. The frosting was a bit too sweet for my taste, but I just did a little plop in the center, kind of how Nadia does in the show. The recipe says to get a star tip and cover the whole top of the cupcake, which I'm glad that I didn't do. I'm glad that I went with Nadia's approach in the show because I think it would have been too sweet. And the freeze-dried strawberries on top were very nice and tart, so they contrasted with the frosting really well. And I got the opportunity to actually share these with people. I brought them to my book club. They were a big hit, so I was very happy about that. And the the book club hostess, her five-year-old daughter, opened the door, and she, she was so cute. She was like, those are some nice looking cupcakes you've got there. (laughs) (laughs) So of course I shared with the kiddos. Yours look more realistic though. I'm looking at the picture from, you know, Nadia Bakes. uh, If people didn't know, all the recipes are available online Mm -hmm. and most of them have accompanying pictures. Yours now, I'm like comparing the two. I'm like, yours look more realistic. (laughs) Because I actually made them and I'm not a food stylist (laughs) (laughs) or food photographer. But like in a good way, too, that I'm like, oh, it looks like gooey and yummy, you know? It was good. And the recipe describes the strawberry on the inside as juicy. And I feel like once it's baked, it's definitely juicy. You know, you get that nice gooey center, like you said. Looking at the picture on the like on the BBC website it does not look like that strawberry has been cooked it looks like it is just a pristine (laughs) strawberry lies (laughs) there's no space between the strawberry and the batter where I Mm -hmm. feel like there would be like you see in my photo how it sort of collapsed a little and shrunk in on itself a little like you said it's a baked fruit so that's what it does food for thought would you make them again (laughs) I would make them again for an event of some kind. I don't think I'd make these again just for myself because they are a little bit complicated. There's several moving parts. There's two steps that require a piping bag, which I'm just not very skilled with. I think if I used piping bags more, this recipe would have been easier. And, you know, you have to do the conversions for some things. Well, I did actually use my food scale, so I didn't have to do too many conversions, but not really worth the effort or for wanting like a quick sweet but you know they're really cute they're impressive for something like book club for example (laughs) and also just really quick bonus potluck i did make that chocolate and lime croissant pudding (gasps) and i hated it (laughs) oh Yeah, so I don't want to be one of those people who changes the recipe drastically and then complains about how it didn't taste good. But I did make one modification. I don't feel like it was drastic. Instead of dark chocolate chips, all I had on hand were white chocolate chips. So I used those instead. So take that as you will. But that being said, I didn't like it. It just tasted like lime. The whole thing tasted like lime. And it came out of the oven kind of tepid temperature-wise Maybe I didn't convert the temperature of the oven correctly in the recipe. I think I did. In fact, I think I even erred on the side of making the oven hotter than the recipe called for. The croissant became all like chewy. Anyway, do not recommend. I didn't like it. (laughs) Well, guess what I made? (laughs) Oh, (laughs) I knew it just based off her face. I was like, (gasps) okay, I'm very interested to hear now what your impression was. Uh, Okay, this is exciting. Oh my god, can we recap for the audience in case they didn't catch that? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, so, Meg made a bonus one. It's what I made for my dish. (laughs) Oh no, and I've preemptively said bad things about it. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I made the uh, 
croissant ice cream pudding. So I will send you guys my <laughs> There's so pictures. much intrigue in this episode. <laughs> I'm so excited. So, yes, I, I made the same croissant dish and I had a different experience. And I wonder if it has to do with ingredients or something. I don't know. So I special ordered the specific just the lime, not the lemon and lime, but just the lime marmalade. Mm -hmm. So basically, like, you get the large croissants and you butter them. And from one of the first um, pictures you can see, I had taken butter out. So I had to go to my mother-in-law since we don't have an oven yet to bake this. And I removed butter from my fridge this morning to be like, okay, it's going to soften. And then I got to my mother-in-law's and realized I left it on the counter softening at home. <laughs> nah. So I had to get some butter from hers. And so it wasn't fully softened. So then I had to, uh, in the first one you can see, it's like pats of butter. And then I was able to get it a little softer, more softened. Um, and then, so yeah, you butter the croissants. You put the lime on it, you lay them in the tray, then you scoop on the ice cream. According to the recipe online, you um, let it sit for 10 minutes while the ice cream melts a little bit into... <laughs> Justine, you look so disgusted. I still hate the idea of this recipe. <laughs> it just fascinates me. And then... And I can't believe you both made it. <laughs> And then uh, once it's sat for 10 minutes, then you add the chocolate chips. I did semi-sweet chocolate chips because um, the grocery store I ordered stuff from didn't have dark chocolate chips at the time. So I just went with semi-sweet. And then, yeah, you put it in the oven. On the recipe site, it says 10 minutes. Nadia says 12. So I did it for 11. <laughs> Split the difference. Smart. Yes. Um, and then it came out and I think when it's in the, the pan, it looks into like, I also, did you eat it right away when you took it out or did you let it sit? I did the thing that I always do now, apparently, which is do a little photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so, y yep. <laughs> I, I let it sit on the stove for, I don't know, five or 10 minutes and just kind of, cause it was like straight up, like boiling, like, mm ice cream basically um Can I ask, what temperature did you set your oven to 400 degrees that's what i did too interesting Ugh. do you have I just hate it gas or electric <laughs> electric okay i also used electric at my mother-in-law's so yeah so then it came out and then i served it now I, the thing is where i would say that um the food styling on this one, which is weird, is there's no way to take out one slice of this and make it look okay on a plate. <laughs> Absolutely no way. It can only be photographed within the pan all laid out together. I also agree with this. <laughs> you said you agree with this one? I agree totally, yes. Yeah, because I, you know, gave my mother-in-law the first one, so it had, like, the nice little... And, like, literally, you just, like, go to scoop it out and it just starts falling apart. She, like, I served her first, and she went and sat down and instantly was like, oh, my God, this is so amazing. She loved it. And uh, I also really liked it. And <laughs> when I was like, it's so funny that you hate it, because I was like, oh, well, now I have this really simple recipe in my arsenal of, like, things that I can make that... I don't know, like, I really liked the lime and the chocolate together, which is something that Nadia mentioned in the video it was like the lime mm -hmm. and the chocolate i i will admit though i did not measure anything out i didn't either i think that's totally fine that also makes the recipe very easy yeah like i just i don't i don't know what i did like i did not put a thin layer of butter i guess like i put a, a fair amount of butter on my croissants um and then the lime marmalade, I just did, like, a full, like, spoonful for each croissant. I think that's totally fine, because Nadia says in the show how she really likes a lot of jam, and her husband only likes a little, a little. thin amount of jam. And yes. she says something similar about the butter. So I think she purposefully made this recipe to be flexible as far as how much butter and lime marmalade you can add. Yeah. And the same thing with, like, the ice cream scoops. I just sort of scooped it on so it was all, like kind of balanced and then 
I just put chocolate, I just took a couple handfuls of chocolate chips and sprinkled them on top. I don't know. My mother-in-law loved it. Like, I, I didn't say anything, and she instantly started going, like, mmm, at the table. Like, she was <laughs> like... Well, I'm glad. I'm really glad she liked it and that you liked it. That's great. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe um, it's my English ancestry coming through or something, but... Because she, she was like, this is such a weird thing to do with ice cream. And she's like, but it mm-hmm. works so well. And... <laughs> We each had a second helping of it. And so I still have like half in my fridge for Jeremy to try later. But that's the thing. I have a lot left over as well. And I thought, well, maybe I should give this a second shake. And I think I'll reheat it in the oven and maybe eat it immediately when it's nice and hot. I think it might be a better experience, perhaps. Maybe because that's I mean, it was still very, very warm. I don't know. There were still parts of the croissant for me that weren't overly mushy like that were still kind of crisp I don't know if you can see in the one picture that's a little more yellow the lighting was horrible in my mother-in-law's kitchen and it was raining out so like there wasn't (laughs) any natural light that I could do it all looked horrible but I feel like you can see where it's kind of at the tops of like the croissants it's still kind of crispy Mm -hmm. what did you think of the lime marmalade I loved the lime marmalade I liked the marmalade itself. I could see myself putting a little tiny bit on toast, but it really just does taste like lime jello, don't you think? A little bit. I don't I really love citrus, though. Like, as we discovered in Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, I'm the acid girl. And I love, <laughs> I love lime. So I, like, when I was cutting the croissants, I had one end that fell off, and I just ended up scooping up some lime marmalade with it before I even baked anything. The one thing that did freak me out, though, is I went and washed my hands in the bathroom. And when I squirted out the soap, it was roughly the same color and consistency of the lime marmalade. And I had this big moment of, like, cognitive dissonance. And I was just like, oh, what's happening? And then I was like, oh, okay, nope. Nope, this is soap. That is is marmalade. We're fine. (laughs) Wow. So, yeah, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. And I will probably make it again. And I was already thinking of different ways, like doing like maybe a strawberry jam with like um, more of like a mocha chip or something, like just trying like different ways to do this. It was very simple and fast. And I felt like I actually like accomplished something in a, in a good way. I don't know. I feel like so many times I struggle in the potluck episodes. And this time I was like, yes, I did it. <laughs> What's nice. the texture consistency of the ice cream when it comes out of the oven? For me, it was, I don't know, because like when I pulled it out of the oven, it was still like bubbling and very kind of foamy. So what is it when you eat it? When you eat it, it's just, I mean, like she says in the video, it's just a little custardy. Like it's not really American pudding as this is it, <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It was just kind of um, like a thicker sauce, kind of, if that makes sense. But also like the chocolate melted into it. Maybe I should have used a different ice cream or something because the consistency of mine was melted ice cream. (laughs) It was soupy, you know, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it was a nice thick cream. I will say the ice cream that I used was um, I did the Briars all natural is there different sort of like fat content in different ice creams? It could be, probably. Yeah, I think it is interesting when some of her recipes are like get an ice cream or get this, but there's like a lot of sort of varieties of things. So maybe expecting d- different results from whatever ingredient yes. you choose to use. I did also in the recipe it said to grease the pan with butter, but I just used canola oil instead because I figured there was going to be enough butter on these buttery croissants we didn't need to bake it in more butter I liked your idea Amanda to maybe try this with a different jam or something because I did ask myself well why didn't I like this and it was just it was lime that's the only flavor I got really I felt like it was very one note and I like lime, but then I asked myself, well, maybe I just don't like lime desserts, but you know, I do like key lime pie. So that maybe wasn't really the answer, but I guess there's not a lot of lime desserts. Maybe I'm just not used to it. And it, 
It does. It is very strong with the lime, especially with the amount of like lime marmalade that I used. Well, I'm very glad that yours was more successful than mine was. I think it's funny that Justine is so baffled by this and both of us were so fascinated we made it. <laughs> yeah. We're like, we gotta try it. <laughs> and I will still not be making it. <laughs> and that is okay. <laughs> we're gonna take a quick commercial break and then we'll be back to see if Justine has made anything with lime marmalade. <laughs> and we're back. Let me guess, Justine, you made nothing with lime marmalade. That is accurate. <laughs> <laughs> What did you make? Which of the two vegan recipes did Justine yeah. make? <laughs> exactly. That didn't have stuff she was allergic to. Exactly. I made the cheesecake. <laughs> da, 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 da. No surprise. <laughs> or as it's called in the recipe book, banana ice cream cheesecake with blueberry compote. And it's a little bit of disaster. Mm. Oh, no. Well, and then also I recognize that I didn't have the correct size pan. I used what oh. I have. Whatever. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to use what you have. Yeah, and that's exactly also why I wanted to make this, because it's literally everything I have already. Like, it's mostly oats. I have oats. I eat oats every day. I'm gluten-free now, so I eat a lot of oats all the time. We got to buy, like, two bags of oats. And, you know, maple syrup and banana. That's all stuff that I had already. Okay, so I've got a little adventure. That plus, let me show you what it looked like in the end. Because that's like my adventure. And then you'll see another uh, folder in there called reveal. And then you'll see another folder in that folder. Don't go into <laughs> that one yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a whole thing. Okay. It looks good. I wouldn't have guessed that you had a disaster making it. Eh, it. It's just more like the disaster came at the very end. It was actually pretty mm. easy to make. Pretty simple to make. And I and I commented as we recorded the episode, I was like, this looks pretty easy. I've seen more complicated vegan cheesecakes in my day. Really, you just need a spring form pan. Uh, you should use the seven inch one. That's not what I used because that's not what I had. <laughs> so... The problem with that is I don't have the sides going up. Mm. I just have oh. a base. And I'm like, cheesecakes have a base. That's fine. It's fine. The base is the uh, toasted oats and hazelnuts, as you see in my first picture. That's me toasting them. <laughs> I should have taken selfies. Like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't believe that it was you now. Yeah, it was really me. I did this. <laughs> So you toast them until golden, they start smelling all nice, and then you put them in your food processor, you blitz them up to a fine crumb, and then you add your, quote, golden syrup. I used maple syrup, because mm. like I said, it's what I had, and your coconut oil, and blitz them together. And they do make this nice crumb base, picture number three. <laughs> And then the next picture is my frozen bananas. That is seven bananas straight up. And when wow. you put it in your food processor, it fills the whole thing. Now, here's the annoying part is that she's like, oh, yeah, add everything in, but wait five minutes. Just walk away for five minutes, allow the bananas to defrost very slightly so they can process easily. More like wait like half an hour because that mm. stuff will not move once it's frozen in there. <laughs> Again, she made it look very uh, easy in, in that episode of Nadia Pakes, but I was mm -hmm. just standing there being like, defrost. <laughs> yeah, it took a while, but it did get eventually to that scoopable consistency. And I did even want to go a little more because I didn't want any banana chunks, which I did in pouring out find a couple here and there surprise banana chunks. Did you leave them in or did you snatch them out and eat them? No, I left them in. They're surprise for later. <laughs> <laughs> banana surprise. Yep. It's like the mystery baby. <laughs> We're working <laughs> the banana chunk. <laughs> Where's the baby? It's good luck. <laughs> um, and then I also made the blueberry compote. I don't think I've ever made a compote before, but I didn't realize it was so easy. It's just so easy to put all things in a pan and just stir till you're like, okay, it's done. So easy to make a compote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm putting that stuff on everything now. 
It's really good on pancakes. It looks delicious. And I used frozen blueberries. So it was like easy peasy times two. <laughs> okay, so in the instructions, it says, spoon the mixture on top of the prep base, pop it in the freezer till you're ready to eat. No time of freezing instructions. <laughs> mm. Ah. Well, it looks great in my photo. I was kind of having a, a great British bake-off moment, you know, when they're making <laughs> ice cream cake in the tent and uh-huh. then it all starts to melt. Okay, yeah, you go into the last um, aftermath? folder, the aftermath. aftermath, to see what it really <laughs> looks like. <laughs> the peek behind the curtain. Yeah. Yeah, it looks a little melty. It lo- it's a little melty. It yeah. Looks, it looks like the blueberries just, like, decided to become within <laughs> the cake as opposed to on top of the cake. Yeah. <laughs> so how long had it been in the freezer at this point? Over an hour. Mm-hmm. And it was solid. Like, I touched the top. I was like, that's solid. And I don't know. It just said, like, keep it chilled till you're ready. And it's even, like, in the in the video, she's just like, pop it in, take it out, eat it. Da, 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 you know? Mm-hmm. Interestingly enough, last night I was looking through my Oh She Glows cookbook and there is a recipe that looks very similar to this one. Even like the picture of it are very similar, except it's like a apple something instead of this. And hers, she explicitly lists, put it in the freezer for four hours. Mm. Ah. And I'm like, there we go, Nadia, you got (laughs) to... You gotta tell people these things. Yeah, that is strange that it just says until you're ready to eat. Because when anything is frozen, like, you need to have a certain amount of time for it to set properly. Yeah, you need to have it freeze fully. And then I would say you probably also want time to let it defrost a little bit so that you can cut into it well. Mm hmm. That's also in the Oh She Glows recipe, too. Like, leave it out for yeah. X amount of time and that then makes cut sense. into it. <laughs> This Nadia Bakes recipe, very sparse on the instructions. Interesting. But I did want to just make it look like the picture because I think like that's one of our goals. Not, not an official goal, but like you want to kind of style it to make it look like, look okay, like it they... does in the show. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, okay, so she put the blueberries right on top of that thing. Here we go. And then all of a sudden it just starts like crying out the side and I'm like "Mm." (laughs) so you said that it was in the freezer for an hour were the blueberries fully chilled when you put them on top nope it does not say to do that (laughs) oh well that might have been part of it too had they just come off the stove top pretty much okay well that's part of it too then (laughs) yeah but like literally it was I was doing like the dumb thing I'm just doing what is exactly written in the cookbook sort of thing yeah that's what I do It does sound like a bake-off adventure. Yeah. (laughs) Gotta freeze this part. Gotta chill off this part. Right, because it's saying, like... Well, she it does say, um, yeah, add the warm compote on top. Just leave it for a few minutes before slicing, like... Oh, it says add warm compote on top. It says warm, okay. Okay, so that to me suggests that she does want you to put it on while it's still Mm. warm. Yeah. Interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> but then that makes sense why it cries off the side and like becomes embedded because you're putting something yep. warm on top of something that's not fully like set frozen. Oh, yeah. and yeah, if memory serves from that very first episode, she did say that she liked the contrast between the warm compote and the cold cheesecake. So yeah, yeah it sounds to me like maybe the recipe needs a little tweaking. Yeah, I mean, and... I knew, like, I was like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm going to do what the recipe says, it'll be fine, sure, and then, like, literally took the pictures, put my, like, cover back on it, shoved it back in the freezer. I think that's what you texted me, it's melting. It's, yeah, I was like, Amanda's texting me something, 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 and I'm like, I'm dealing with melting right now. Oh, no. Well, it looks really good. What what about the flavor? Did you like it? Oh, yeah. Flavor is good. Like, it tastes good, for sure. I think the flavor of everything really goes together. It's really sweet, but, like, even not too sweet. I really like the texture of the base. It's chewy. 
It's still like eating ice cream, though. I wouldn't call it cheesecake, even as like a vegan cheesecake. I'm like, it's mm-hmm. it's, it's ice cream on like a, a chewy base, which is... So it really nuts. had the ice cream texture. It didn't even have like cheesecake texture, you wouldn't say? Right. I mean, okay. that's so- what it just... It was just frozen custard yummy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So more like an ice cream cake versus a cheesecake. Yes, that is definitely, I would say that. I cut into it, I put it in my mouth, I said, this is an ice cream cake. <laughs> <laughs> I have made ice cream cake. <laughs> All the flavors sound really good. Do you think you would make this again or do you think you would do the Oshi Glows recipe? I would try Oshi Glows first because that recipe was longer and more detailed and less chance for me to screw up, so. (laughs) (laughs) So here's a question I have for you guys, because I think we all found that the recipes were kind of simple. Is this because we were looking at the free ones online and did not buy her book? Oh, snaps. Oh, so it's like one of those things where they leave out the crucial details unless you buy the recipe. I mean, I don't know. I Now I'm, I'm interested to, like, see if my library has it, just to see... If it's something where, like, there's more detail in the book itself, as opposed to, like, you know, we don't have all the money in the world, so we were looking at the free recipes online. It does sound like, for all of us, we had some discrepancies between recipe and actuality, and definitely discrepancies between show and Mm -hmm. reality. (laughs) There's obviously a good reason why she would want to make it looks simple, right? You know, simple, approachable. You're more likely to make the recipe. You're more likely to buy the cookbook. But then I think the danger lies in if you make it seem too simple, then you feel like you've done something wrong when you're actually making the recipe. Or you Mm -hmm. might be a little bit frustrated if it's not as simple as originally thought. Yeah, I feel like if this was called ice cream cake, I would think of it mentally as ice cream cake and be like, oh, let's leave it in the freezer for half a day or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like, no, she promised me cheesecake. (laughs) (laughs) But basically, overall, I do agree with you. And that's like the hint I was just starting. Once I saw that you had discrepancies, Meg, and you are fantastic at everything (laughs) you do, I'm like, Mm -hmm. hmm, I'm seeing a pattern. (laughs) I mean, we still love Nadia. We do. We still love Nadia. I did really like the flavor of the mm-hmm. cupcakes. They were really cute. They were just a tiny bit more effort than I usually want to put in, but that's not to say I wouldn't make them again. I'm probably going to make this again. <laughs> Give me that lime marmalade. I will not make this when you come to visit, Justine. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's our potluck. Any other lessons we feel like we've learned? We've learned that Nadia is really, really good at making stuff look delicious. Mm -hmm. And making it look easy. And we love her. (laughs) She hires very good food stylists. Yeah. For sure. (laughs) Props to those food stylists. Don't believe everything you see on the internet. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that was a very stirring conversation. Now we're going to see what is on our back burner for today. So, first up, this was sent to us by Heidi from Vibrant Visionaries. Maya Rudolph and Andy Samberg are going to have a new show called Baking It that's going to be on uh, Peacock this winter. It looks like it's going to be a holiday baking show competition it's a spinoff of making it which i put on my queue but never watched did anybody watch making it i I haven't seen making it watched some of it my mom is obsessed with making it she loves it and so i've seen it sometimes like in passing when i was staying at her house i will say like one of the things that i liked of the stuff that i saw in making it is And the way that we, like, with Great British Bake Off, where everybody's very supportive of each other, and it's not, like, kind of, Mm -hmm. like, that nasty backstabby, like, I feel like that's the same kind of feeling that Making It had, where, Mm -hmm. you know, it's also Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman, who are the judges on that, and they're very, like, happy and supportive of the people, and it's about kind of celebrating 
their creativity and their love of whatever they're doing. And so I'm hoping that'll be the same thing with baking it, where it'll be very supportive. And I read that it's going to be, you know, Maya Rudolph and Andy Samberg, who I, I adore both of them, and I'm very happy to see that they have a show. But it said they're, they're going to have a panel of grandmothers who <laughs> are going to judge their food. But those roles haven't been cast yet. So I'm just, I'm very intrigued for a panel of grandmas. Like, I just love that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping our friends at the Adam and Andy podcast uh, cover this show. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. And then also on the back burner, this is just kind of an update. We had mentioned Priya Krishna has a new cookbook coming out with David Chang called Cooking at Home. And she has posted that it is now available for pre-order. Yeah, and she showed um, some snippets on it on her Instagram. We have some shout outs for you. Thank you to The Unwritable Rant, Sun Power Pod, and What's a Test Kitchen. Um, and Mary for sharing your avocado recipe ideas with us on Instagram. I had never thought about breading and frying avocado. I think that was Unwritable Rant who shared that. And I don't know why. Like, that sounds like such a th- an American thing that we should all think of, of breading and frying something. But Sounds delicious. <laughs> breading, good. Avocado, good. Frying, good. Good. <laughs> I think I might have to try this. <laughs> Thanks to Sean Gibbs for commiserating with us on Twitter about Squariot. That's how I'm thinking this is pronounced. Squariot. Squariot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's these weird little square cube shaped food type things. It's another one of those in the vein of. Soylent. It's one of these, mm-hmm. you know, tech bro startups where they're like, how can I take all the joy out of eating and just get nutrients? So Squareet is apparently their answer to that. And also shout out to Margaret, who got this on my radar. Thanks. No, thanks, Margaret. <laughs> it's like in the Matrix. You shared that I just thought instantly of Soylent Green as people and I just... Mm-mm. Yeah, who names their food product, or any product for that matter, Soylent? You're just asking for it. Yeah, it's just... just yeah. Soylent is terrible, by the way. Do not recommend. <laughs> Do not want them as a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> and then thank you to everyone on Instagram that shared with us um, what they would put in a donut. Mm. The Edmonton tourist, Mrs. Casper, and Saitali Salgado... And I should say, these were kind of alternate things to put in a donut for listeners who were not privy to that conversation. Very creative responses. Yeah. The Parmesan donut with bruschetta inside, I thought was an interesting concept. Yeah. Another savory donut like Nadia made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Make these donuts, guys. Go out to the world. <laughs> make them. I also, if I may, wanted to give a personal shout out to Diana from the Happily Ever Aftermath podcast because... She listened to our last episode and heard me talking about how much I wanted a cute little toaster oven from Dash, and she sent me one. So (gasps) it was very sweet. It's adorable. It's honestly like a toy. It's so cute, but it's a teeny toaster oven, fits right on the counter. It's made by Dash, which is the same company that made the egg cooker that I love. And coincidentally, she even got the same color as my egg cooker. So I've got a little matching egg cooker and toaster oven in this cute mint teal green color. So thank you, Diana. Well, thank you to everybody for getting in touch with us on social media, sharing and, uh, you know, like buying things for Meg. That's real cool. (laughs) And then um, we didn't have any reviews this week, but uh, it is always helpful if you can rate uh, and review us on iTunes or whatever your podcatcher of choice is next time on the podcast. We start a new season. We are going to be watching Taste the Nation with Padma Lakshmi, which uh, here in the States is on Hulu. Woo! Savory dishes, maybe. This will bring me back to my Top Chef days. (laughs) 
Yes. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Pot Appetit Gourmet Takes. We'd love to hear from you. So find us on Twitter and Instagram at pod underscore appetite. And on Facebook at Pod Appetit Podcast. You can also email us at podappetitepodcast at gmail.com and find all of our episodes on our website, podappetitepodcast.com. Have you ever finished a book and wondered, what do I read next? Or wished that you were in a book club, but everyone you know says they don't have time to read? Maybe you enjoy audiobooks or are looking to try a new-to-you genre, author, or narrator. Hi, I'm Tamara, and I have a shelf addiction. I read books, listen to audiobooks, and I'm here to share with you the best of the best and to warn you off of the worst. I hope to open your mind to new and awesome books to feed your inner book nerd. I have a unique and honest perspective, and I look forward to talking books with you. From entertaining book chats and interviews to five-minute book reviews, there's something for every type of reader on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Subscribe for free on your podcatcher of choice by going to shelfaddiction.com forward slash podcast and you too can have a shelf addiction.